today we came to see the Kango Caves. We arrived here almost too late, but we made it. Yeah. I'm taking this off because they said it's gonna be hot very and humid. hot and humid inside. It will also get harder and harder to breathe as we go more than 600 meters deeper into the caves. We had to keep our masks on for much of the filming, so hopefully you can understand everything we say. I will narrate most of the video because we can't always talk during the tour. We only had a very short time to film the caves and talk to the camera. We informed right at the beginning not to touch or lean on the walls of the caves because the interior is made of limestone and because of the limestone's fragile nature, curious hands could damage the rock formations over time. Our toy will last one hour and we'll walk through several rooms from the most colossal to tiny and slippery corridors deep inside the earth. This is the first cave discovered after the Bushmen by a farmer here in South Africa. There's actually water running down on some of the walls. It's thanks to this water that we have so many stalactites, these sharp rocks that hang from the ceiling. They are crystallized mineral deposits formed by the constant presence of water which seeps down from the ceiling. When the water drips to the ground from above, the same happens from below. The mineral deposits on the ground crystallize and form stalagmites which grow upwards towards the ceiling where the stalactites hang from. Every stalactite has a stalagmite, but inside we hardly see any stalactites on the floor and there's an explanation for that. Now the floor we are standing on is not the natural floor it used to be. This is actually clay and three meters underneath there are a lot of stalactites. And the reason why they did it is because many and many 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 years ago they used to run concerts inside this cave. Over there is where the stadium used to be. Yes, this room is so big it creates perfect acoustics for concerts. Orchestral performances used to take place in these caves, but they put an end to it in 1996 for fear of musical vibrations interfering with the structure of the caves. Also, visitors continue to break some of the formations to take home as souvenirs. Now you can only visit the caves with a guide, which is what we're doing now. Our guide is the voice of an angel and she gave us the taste of the acoustics within the cave. to breathe with a mask. So we go into a smaller room, but the tour guide said it's a lot more spectacular than the previous one. The previous one is the largest, but this one seems to be the big deal. Wow, look at this here, see? Oh, look at that one. At some point, the stalactites and stalagmites will come together and meet in the middle to form a column. Now the water coming from the ceiling will go down the sides of the column, making it wider and wider. The result is rock formations of many sizes and shapes. Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> that one is so big, they used to be two columns. Now it's just one single chubby one. This is a whipping willow behind me. That's how this huge column got nicknamed by the people working here. Stalactites grow one centimeter every 100 years. Stalagmites grow a little faster, four centimeters every 100 years. Of course, this process can be faster or slower. It depends on the amount of water seeping through the ceiling. You may have noticed the dim light inside the caves and there's a reason for that. These rock formations face constant danger, algae and moss. All moss needs to grow is water and the humid interior of the Kango Caves provides the perfect environment for this. And what about light? 
Moss and algae love artificial light, and once they appear in the formations, they start to suck the water out, making the rocks dry, preventing them from growing, and causing them to crack. If the spread of these plants is not controlled, the entire interior of the Kango Caves could collapse. That's the reason why they keep the lights off all the time and only switch them on when people are present here. Otherwise, this can be very detrimental to the whole cave. It could collapse. The people here also wash the formations with brooms to remove moss and algae and mold. We are now heading towards the entrance that was first used when this cave was discovered in 1780 by a farmer named Jacobus van Zeel. Wow, this is tight. This is quite tight. Oh, <laughs> Before, it took four hours to walk from this entrance to the previous room. Now it takes us one hour to get in and out of the cave again. Now here you can see an example of the original floor before it got completely covered by clay. It was not just the uneven floor that made it difficult for people to walk. With zero electricity back then, candles and torches were the only source of light available. That's why you can see the black suit marks on the walls. This lamp replicates the light of a torch, the kind that we used in the 17th century to explore the cave. They didn't have light to explore, so they ended up burning a little bit of the sides. And you can even see some names engraved there because, you know, people want to leave their marks and they destroy things. Over there, you can see a rock formation. On the side here, on the right-hand side, you can see the wing of an angel. On the left-hand side, on the top, you can see what it looks to be a Bible and underneath a cross. The other thing that happened in 1921, they installed plants. As I've said in the previous room, it looks like that. Wow! Wow! wow. First Mars ago, they used to put colorful lights on the road, but people started complaining that it looked too plasticky, so they stopped. Many and many years ago, this mountain was covered with water. The activity of the currents is believed to have shaped these caves. So it is possible that there are more caves underneath these ones that haven't been discovered yet. After the discovery in 1780, the Kengo Caves belonged to the people until 1920. In 1921, the municipality took over and they started to implement rules and regulations and now people had to pay to enter the caves. As you can see, the ends of these stalactites are dull because years and years ago, tourists used to come and break them to take them home as souvenirs. Not just as a souvenir, limestones have a shiny appearance when wet. So when these caves were discovered, many people would steal parts of the rock formations because they believed they had gold or diamonds in them, only to discover later in sunlight that there was nothing but rocks. As a consequence, these formations will take a few more hundred years to grow closer to what they used to be. You see, even these ones here are broken. Another narrow corridor. Just keeps on getting better and better. Now we're going through another little corridor and I have no idea what's there. There have been a few bats flying around since we arrived in the cave and we finally spotted one right there. Visiting a real life cave was my childhood dream and seeing a bat inside here makes the experience even more complete because a cave without a bat is like apple pie without ice cream, right? <laughs> This particular column is a hollow formation formed by crystals. Just look at how the light shines through it. 
Like an organ pipe, it carries sound. When you hit it, it makes a beating sound like a big drum. Our guide will give us another show singing the national anthem of South Africa. <laughs> You probably noticed that there are no ancient paintings on the walls. Well, there used to be many, but a lot of them got rubbed off by the constant touching of visitors many years ago. Paintings that survived were cut out of the rocks and sent to museums. Thanks, we wanted a photo. <laughs> this is a stalactite and a stalagmite that joined together in the middle and formed the pillar. Oh look, it's forming on the step. Wow. Although the floor is paved and you have stairs to go up and down, you need to be careful. These caves are constantly wet and the risk of slipping is very high. Don't slip. Hundreds of years ago, when they discovered this cave, they had no light whatsoever. The only thing they had was a little torch, which didn't illuminate at all. So they were not able to see all the rock formations inside this cave. It was only years later, after the electricity came, they were able to see all of this beauty here. And now even, it's a lot darker than what you see in the camera. The camera is seeing a lot light, a lot more light. That's true. Yeah, you can't see as much as what the camera is no. seeing with your natural eye. I finally fulfilled my childhood dream of being in a cave. And what a cave. And what a cave. <laughs> wow, it all touches my head. This humidity destroys your hair. I think I'm looking like a broom now. Light in the end of the tunnel. It's almost blinding. So this is the outside. This is the outside. So this is where Kango Caves is situated. It has been quite hot these days, apart from a little bit of rain a few days ago. But the cave makes it feel so nice and cool outside. <laughs> 